day. And you have the report for the day. Zankara used block I will destroy vehicles in violent process. Angry youth armed with weapons have surged up in violent process along the Guso Karu Mon Namoda Highway in Zamfara State. According to eyewitnesses, the protesters have passed the road very early on Monday over the incessant attacks by bandits in the communities. One of the, one of the commuters who was trapped along the road explained that the youth blocked the highway along Kuya Junction and began to destroy public vehicles traveling along the road. They condemned the unending insecurity and attacks that which the people of the area have suffered at the end of the bandit. While the demonstration was ongoing, police offices were said to have dispatched the protesters to ensure the free flow of, vehic of vehicular movement on the road. Residents of Zamfara have been living in fear as a result of the continued attack by bandits on communities in various parts of the state. One of the recent attacks was the killing of over 20 people when the bandits stopped five communities in the two local government areas of the state about two weeks ago. The affected communities are Gambaken, Bigiya, Donroyi, Torawa, and Wiwoji are located in Jumi and Kura Namoda local government areas of the state. Addressing a press conference on April 2nd, the Commissioner of Information in Zamfara, Ibrahim Dosara, revealed that no fewer than 2,619 people were killed in the state between 2011 and 2019, respectively. He added that bandits abducted 1,190 people from the various parts of Zamfara state in the last eight years and over 100,000 people were displaced from their ancestral homes as a result of bandit activity while 40,378 livestock were rusted within the period. Dosara noted that the Zafara state government has spent a sum of 970 million million naira of payment of ransoms to bandits to secure the release of kidnapped victims since 2011. He lamented that there were more than 100 different camps and over 30,000 bandits operating across Zamfara and beyond, but the state government would continue with its amnesty program for bandits as part of measures to secure its people. And still on the news, among FCT primaries election, Governor Yaya Bello and several members FCT reconciliation panel. Following the processes of nomination of the All Progressive Congress FPC candidate for the forthcoming Federal Capital Territory FCC Area Council elections, the National Chairman of the FPC Caretaker Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, Governor Mai Mala Dumi, has approved the constitution of a reconciliation committee. The committee is expected to identify persons who may have taken issues with the conduct of exercise the issues in contention, if any, and to take practical steps to consolidate and harmonize all such people, all such persons and issues in time for a statutory outcome in the FCC Area Council elections. The full composition of the committee is as follows. His Excellency Governor Yaya Bello, Chairman, His Excellency Governor Abdullah Sule, Member, Senator Ahmed Yusuf Yusuf, Member, Honorable Clinton Stick, Member, Honorable Uche Oga, Member, and Dr. James Lalu, Member, and Honorable Akaremi Olaide, who is the, who are supposed to be the Secretary. Plus, I have the sat for Commissioners, five others and appointees in Cross River State. Cross River State Governor, in the early hours of Monday, sat four of his cabinet members, including his Commissioner for Information, Mr. Asu Okan, and eight others. I had they took the step further by relieving them of their appointment after they refused to join him in the ruling All Progressive Congress APT. In a statement signed by his special advisor, media and publicity, Mr. Christian Nita, he directed that all those affected should return government properties in their possession with immediate effect. The statement reads, the state governor, his excellency Professor Ben Ayode, has approved the relief of the following persons of their appointment as commissioners Mr. Mike Isibe, 
Rita Ayim, Mr. Isu Okon, Itu Fan, Donatson Ete. Similarly, the underlisted persons have also been relieved of their appointments. Mr. Leo Iyambe, retired Honorable Orok Otu, Duke, Mr. Victor Okon, and Lausa, Mr. John Etin Basi, Honorable Agiji Mbe Agiji. Subsequently, they are hereby directed to return government properties and vehicles in their care with immediate effect to the Chief of Staff to the Governor, His Excellency. Thanks them for their services to the state and wishes them well in their future endeavors. He stated. However, one of the commissioners, Ikutam Dr. Etin, has already resigned his appointment on May 21, 2021, before he served the day. And with this, we move to the foreign scene. Pastor arrested for alleged sodomizing peoples in Uganda. A pastor and L teacher of rural Limpas Primary School at, Wasi at Wakito District in Kampala, Uganda, has been accused of sodomizing six people between 2016 and 2019. The suspect, Bagi Didot, alias Bakulu, appeared before the International Crime Division Judge Justice David Wangutusi Thursday, May 27, on charges of aggravated defilement. According to the prosecution, the victims were required to sleep naked and married would allegedly then fondue the genitals of the victim with his fingers and thereafter he practiced oral sex and penetration on them. The children were aged between 10 and 16 years when the alleged big crimes were committed. So the court that Maggie Wu was also a pastor admitted them on the burglary scheme and threatened to withdraw if to withdraw it if they refused to sleep with him or report the matter. The prosecution notes that the health teacher, who also used to work as a warden at the school, would allegedly sleep with each of the victims in the dormitory where he also sleeps. The court held that due to Maggie's action, the victims felt pain in the stomach and bottles and found it hard to pass urine and visit normally. The prosecution further states that the head teacher would intimidate the boys whenever they complained about his actions. The case was adjourned to June 8 for further hearing. Bagiki is facing 12 charges related to aggravated defilement and trafficking in children. And he will be remanded to Kitaya government prison. Plus, China to allow couples to have up to three children in attempt to reverse falling birth rights. Birth rate. The Chinese government will allow couples to have three children according to the state run news agency. The latest easing of the strict family planning policies as the country tries to avert a demographic crisis. The Chinese Communist Party top leadership made the decision at the meeting on Monday, the, media, the state media said. In a move designed to combat the country's aging population, the state media did not say when the, when the new policies will be implemented. It comes just three weeks after Beijing published its 2020 census, which showed China's population was growing at the slowest rate in decades. According to China's National Bureau of Statistics, the population rose by just 5.38% over the past decade, the lowest, the slowest growth rate since the, at least the 1960s. China's one-child policy was introduced in 1979 and for more than 35 years limited couples to a single offspring as the country tried to address overpopulation and alleviate poverty. China's economy has boomed in recent years and its demographic needs have changed. Today, the government is relying on a large, youthful workforce to support high levels of economic growth. In an attempt to avoid a, demogra a demographic crisis, the Chinese government announced in 2015 it would loosen the birth restrictions to allow up to two children per family. In 2018, however, the policy reversal failed to rise the country's birth rate which fell almost by 50% year on year on in 2020. Some couples have said the rising cost of living in China makes having a second child too expensive. At the same time, China's population is aging rapidly, endangering its economic growth.
the 21st census, data showed the proportion of the population aged over 65 rose rapidly over the past decade from 8.87% in 2012, in 2010 to 13.5% in 2020. All of this removed sport news. Bruce Fit with will motivate Nigeria's athletes at Olympic Taste Diary. Minister of Youth and Sport Development Sunday Diary has assured that the breathtaking performances of long jumper Ese Ibureme at the Children Vista Festival in the US, where she shattered Shioma and Jua's 25 years African record, will propel her to excel at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Ibureme left lift 7.17 meter to beat Olympic champion Brittany Irizi and Chantelyn Malone to the second and third positions respectively. Her jump erased the record of compatriot Ajua, who lift 7.12 to set to win gold at the Atlantic Olympics in 1996. Congratulations to SA Breme for her impressive performances at the San Diego Shula Vista Festival. She was simply fantastic, cool, confident, and composed. Her performances were not only fantastic, but a motivation to others as Team Nigeria continues to build up to the Tokyo Olympics, Dari said in a statement. This speech will send the right signals to the world that Nigeria's athletes mean business and will not be pushed over at the Olympics. We have provided all support to our team to actualize the dream of podium success at the Olympics. Plus, Argentina suspended from hosting Copa America. Argentina's hosting of the Copa America football tournament has been suspended in view of the current circumstances, Comebo said on Monday as the country endures a record coronavirus surge. The South, Af the South American football body which last week tripped Colombia of co-hosting duties over deadly arrest, said it was considering other offers to host to hold tournament. The Copa America originally due to take place last year, but was postponed for 12 months because of the coronavirus pandemic. Officials are expected to meet on Monday to decide on the next move for hosting the tournament. An Argentina poll published on Friday found that most respondents were against holding the tournament as the country experiences its worst phase of the pandemic so far. Less than two weeks before Copa America scheduled start, Argentina is under a nine-day lockdown and experiencing record daily infections. The Fernandez administration was hoping that the lockdown that began on May 22 would flatten the curve of the infections ahead of the first event. Argentina had presented its switch protocol to Comebel to host the tournament in its serenity, which involved preparing additional stadiums. On May 20, Comebol rejected a plea by Colombia to further delay the June 13, July 10 tournament following a wave of protests and social unrest coupled with an, with an upsurge in COVID-19 cases. It left Argentina as the sole host but a survey conducted by Posta Poyakuri among the representatives, sample of 1,274 city dwelling adults found that 70% believe the country should withdraw. Only 20% believe the championship should continue on Argentina soil, and 10% were on the side. And with this, we've come to the end of the Gallery TV News Bulletin. This hour. Don't forget to join us by 4 p.m. for yet another update. Thanks for watching. Do have a lovely day. Looking for a place to produce and promote your musical videos or a content creator in need of a platform to air your program? The Gallery TV got you covered. At the Gallery, we provide world class production services such as event coverage, promotion and production of musical videos, studio rental, live streaming of events. We also provide airtime for your program on all our platforms. These and lots of other interesting packages, all at an affordable price with a 10% discount. For more details, you can visit us on our website at www.thegallerytv.com.
TV or on our social media platforms at The Gallery TV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The Gallery TV, we set the pace.